Hello guys, this is Ted back at the shop. Working on our 427 and I've uh, got most of the rings um, and uh, we're about ready to uh, um, I've already gapped this one. You can see if I can get a close up here. There you go. I've deburred it. Uh, most of you guys watch channel know that I usually just grind my rings on one side. I grind both sides. But that's uh, 21 thousandths. You can see that the uh, feeler gauge, no trick of the camera, nice and square, feels good. So I'm uh, doing these uh, about 20, 21 on the top ring. The uh, second is uh, 19 thousandths. And uh, Uh, per instructions, four thousandths, find it here, four thousandths per inch of bore. So, um, I'll be right back. Okay, so I did a little math here and I carried it out there. We didn't need to go out that far. So, the minimum would be uh, on the, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the second ring would be uh, 17 thousandths. And on the top ring would be 19.3. And actually, in this uh, ring set, the uh, second rings were spot on. They were, they were uh, right at 19 thousandths. But some of the top rings were like 18 to not quite 17, but just a little less than 18. And that's just too tight. So what I ought to do, you know, you can do whatever you want. I'm, this is not telling you what to do. I was okay with the 19. This is a... This is a stock built back to OEM uh, kind of specs, or and I use that. Uh, it, it's uh, non-high performance. Okay, I mean it's just it's it's not built that way. Uh, I, I mean it's a nice build. It's back uh, uh, nice, but I opted for 19 thousandths on the second ring, and the uh, top was about 17 to 18, as you see. <coughs> the uh, but that's too tight. So I opted to, uh, you can see I showed you uh, one ring. So I'm already ground on this. Uh, fixing. I've got the trusty ABS ring grinder here. <coughs> and it's still not quite uh, 20,000. So I'm just going to try to... Um, Take just a thou, a little over a thou off. Uh, and some of you guys watched the channel before. I take like, I've got a little Indian stone here. Uh, and uh, let's see if I can do this in the camera. And I'm just going to hone those corners and break those edges. And I'm, I'm not trying to really put a chamfer on there or nothing. I'm just, I want to make sure that there's no burrs on there. I'm going to get the back and kind of hard to do this. And of course you can see here, let me get this into focus. See that's still black. I've never touched that. And I've crammed this side. Hope you all are having a good day today. Let's see if I can get this. There you go. Uh, I'd say that was matched up pretty good. That's what we like to see. Okay. You can see we've got a ring in there. Get our uh, focus. You can see we look pretty uh, nice and square. Let's, uh, let's put our feeler gauge in. Uh, 
There you go, you can see it, 21 thousandths. And that just sticks. It's just like our other one. Let's see if I can get a close up here. There you go. You can see the reflection of the ring and the peeler gauge. There you go, nice and straight. Uh, so I've done all these. Uh, I just wanted to show you that last one. Uh, you seen what it took? Uh, basically, I took maybe a thou, thou and a quarter, thou and a half off this ring. Come out really good. Uh, looks really good. There you go. I'll put this same feeler gauge back in this one. Again, I did, already did it once, but there you go. So that's what we like to see. Uh, and I'm going to press on here, and I'll be Okay, also today, we uh, put our rings down there, about 500,000s. I got my caliper here, about 507,000s, but uh, basically about a half inch. And I do this different ways. Sometimes I use a combination square, but uh, you can see I went went around. Always, You always want to make sure uh, you pull the ring up against it. Uh, so it's nice square on the bore you can see so around a half inch so typically i put it down about a half on a fresh bore uh to uh oh about uh between a half and one inch uh, and uh that's kind of where i go today i went went around a half inch a little over a half so thanks for watching okay this is the uh piston set that I'm using for the 427 the FHR series from Icon the IC 9950 um, 60 thousandths over and then uh, this is the ring set I bought this uh, as a kit uh, has the 4250 AM 8 and they are Molly uh, 60 over and they're they're pre-gapped but even though they're pre-gapped you still need to check the gap. As you can see here, we were too tight on our top rings. Uh, we don't want we don't want that. Okay, made in USA. Okay, you can see I've got my bearing in there. We're all torqued up. You remember when you did the uh, rods were. Uh, I'm torqued up to uh, 55 foot pounds so I've got my mic set up here in the mic stand I shut my bench light off uh, you know that thing puts off a lot of heat so I want to heat up my artificially heat up my mic uh, got my uh, charge dial bore gauge the one you guys Watch the channel, you know, I've used this, got this for my bearings. So let's see. Just about got this, I think, set up. Hmm. Can't be high enough. Okay, there you go. There's our zero. Okay. Off camera, I measured the bearing wall thickness and it was within spec. Let's see. 
right here. I can get this. Okay, I don't know if I can film this or not. I've got about a two and one tenths, two and two tenths, so I'm good with that. And uh, There you go. I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna hold this about two and one tenth. So I'm good with that. Okay, guys, I told you I would tell you where those uh, plugs I drilled a while back. You can see in a previous video where they went. And I've got my 38, 39 thousandths hole in there. That's where they go in our big box Chevrolet. The uh, factory performance big box always had these holes drilled. I do it. Uh, a lot of guys take these plugs out and throw them away. They don't, they don't even know that they're even drilled. But... Uh, there you go. So that serves two purposes. I'll talk about that later on. But uh, right now we've got our uh, 427 all assembled. And I'm gonna put my timing chain on and uh, I'll degree the cam later. But I just wanted you to There you go. Let's get our timing chain on here and I'll be right back. Uh, our timing chain we're using today is the 8991 PBM Urson. And uh, I like to get the steel billet set. It has the uh, uh, roll on chain. Let's see if I can get this where you can maybe read it. Roll on chain. And. Uh, Made in the USA, steel billet, and I get it with the uh, Torrington bearing on the back. I really like that. And I've got new hardware kit here from Engine Pro. I get it from different companies. It just comes with a cam lock plate and some new, uh, they're grade 8 um, camshaft bolts. I'll get our cam gear on and I'll be right back. Okay, I just, I'm just going to just show you how our uh, cam turns really nice had lube on there uh, previously and uh, anyways uh, this uh, timing set is a multiple index you can see I've got my zero up or zeros on the key of course cam turns really nice I'll be right back.
Okay, I've just got a, a short wrench here and I just wanted to kind of show you how nice this uh, turns over. Nice and smooth. I'll degree the cam in. Uh, okay, there we go. All spick and span. We're on a downhill run. About got her done. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. That chain's tight and even on a block that's been line honed. It's not a reduced center line uh, chain either, but it sure is tight. So people think they you know they don't want to line hone a block because they're afraid that the chain will be loose. Well, there's one. I line honed it. Uh, a little tighter. Uh, tighter if it was a little bit looser it wouldn't hurt my feelings, but it, it's good. We'll break it in and it'll be ready to go Thanks for watching